Hello, my name is Shahriyar Shahriyari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory linear algebra based on my book, Retrolinear. This is an optional lecture for first time learners of linear algebra, but it's meant to bring together our ideas about linear transformations and matrices. So we're gonna talk about the vector space of linear transformations. Again, if this is the first time true linear algebra, you could skip this lecture. If not, you might find this quite interesting. So uh, let's start with our relationship that we have talked in several previous videos about the relationship between linear transformations and matrices. And we have been making the point that there are two different versions of the same thing. So if you have two vector spaces, V and W, and uh, they are finite dimensional, V's uh, dimension of V is N and dimension of W is M. If you fix basis for V and W, then for every linear transformation uh, from V to W, every, you can find a matrix, a matrix that's M by N. M is the uh, dimension of the codomain, N is the dimension of, um, of the domain. And I'm saying over R, if these are vector spaces uh, which, uh, where, where the scalars are reals, this would work also over any field. And every matrix in uh, every M by N matrix also will give you a linear transformation from V to W. Again, each of these things have been the subject of um, the videos, uh, earlier videos. So if you have a linear transformation, you can get a matrix. If you have a matrix, you can get a linear transformation. But going back and forth depends on you having fixed bases for V and W. So you first have to find a basis for V, a basis for W. That's the thing that will allow you to translate between uh, linear transformations and, uh, and matrices. But the question that we have is that, is there any more to that than this, than, than saying that you can go back and forth between linear transformations and matrices? And for that, we will make the following definition. So again, let's say we have vector spaces, and this time I will make it clear that it's over the same field F, and F doesn't have to be the real numbers. Um, so you have two vector spaces, finite dimensional over the same field F. Actually, for this definition, you don't even need them to be finite dimensional. So I'm going to define script L of V comma W. And that's going to be the collection of all linear transformations from V to W. So uh, the elements of this set script L V W are linear transformations. What linear transformations? The linear transformations that domain is the V and the codomain is W. So all those linear transformations are elements of this set. In other words, this is the collection of all linear transformations from V to W. This is a linear algebra class instead of or, or set of videos. And so we are not really interested in one uh, um, linear transformation. We want to see what can we say about all of them. And, and the question is that, well, what can you say about this script LV of W? And, uh, and uh, again, it's a set of things. It's a set of what? Linear transformations. And if you're in a linear algebra class, you have an irresistible urge to ask, can I make it into a vector space? Now, that's sort of an odd thing. Uh, we have uh, V and W vector spaces, and we have looked at linear transformations between them. Can we make that set into a linear transformation? And I wouldn't ask that if we couldn't. So V and W are vector spaces over a field. Let's say that you have two elements, F and G, in L of VW. So again, what are F and G? F and G are functions. What kind of functions? Linear transformations whose domain is V, whose do domain is uh, W. And alpha is a scalar coming from the field F. Um, again, first-time learners, uh, the field F should be R. If you're a first-time learner, probably you're not watching this video. So let's see. Then we define an addition. If you want to make the set of linear transformations a vector space, you need to have an addition. So how do I add two linear transformations? So what is F plus G going from V to W? Well, I'll tell you. Um, to tell you, I mean, I've told you already what the domain and codomain of that function is. I have to tell you the rule. So what does F plus G do to V? Well, you find f of v and add it to g of v. You can find f of v and g of v because f and g are both linear transformations from v to w. f of v and g of v are elements of w, and therefore we can add them in w because w is a vector space. So um, you, 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 that's how you define f plus g. And, and you define alpha f. That's also a map from v to w. How do you define that? Well, what's alpha v? Well, what's alpha f? Sorry, alpha f of v, alpha f of v, is alpha times f of v. So I'm telling you how to um, uh, map elements of v to w. Now, these are functions that I define. They're well-defined functions. But uh, you will have to show that 
they are actually linear transformations. I'm not going to show that, but it's actually not that difficult to show that these guys are actually linear transformations. So you take two linear transformations, use this addition and get another linear transformation. You have a linear transformation and scalar, multiply, and you get uh, another linear transformation. And, um, um, and again, so, so that would mean that F plus G and alpha F are also elements of script L VW. So the script L VW has uh, addition and scalar multiplication. And in fact, with this addition and scalar multiplication, you can show that it follows all the rules of a, uh, of a vector space and you have a vector space over the same field F. Um, now, I'm, I haven't shown you the details, but the details here are actually not that complicated. There's not anything that profound. The, the thing that's profound is sort of the uh, way we're thinking of this. You could, you're starting from V and W and making a new vector space by looking at all their linear transformation. And mind you, now that you have this vector space, you could take linear transformations from this vector space, which was the linear trans the vector space of linear transformation to V or W and have another vector space and, and then find linear transformation from LVW to that guy. And you can, you can come more and more um, uh, layers of linear trans, uh, vector spaces in that way. Okay, so what about this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, LVW? What can we say about this LVW? So here I'm gonna tell you some facts. Most of these facts are actually, have already been proven in my series of lectures, um, but not quite. Um, given in this format, but the ideas are all there. So if you if you want to give a proof of these facts, it shouldn't be um, too difficult as long as you decipher what I'm talking about. So V and W are vector spaces over field F. All that means is that the scalars come from a general field F. Again, if you want, think of those as real numbers. And dimension of V is N, dimension of W is N. Um, you fix bases, S and B for V and W. Um, you fix bases. Then uh, first of all, this is a vector space. For that, actually, you don't need to fix bases, and you don't need uh, uh, the, the V and W to be finite dimensional. This L, V, W is always a vector space. But the other things, you need these bases. Uh, the important thing is that this is not just any vector space, but it's isomorphic to the vector space of M by N matrices with entries in F. So there's an isomorphism between linear transformations and matrices which is something we've been talking about all the time, that linear transformations are another name for matrices. But this makes it very precise that there's a vector space isomorphism between linear transformations and M by N matrices. Of course, we had talked earlier that any finite dimensional vector space is isomorphic to some R K. Um, but, but that isomorphism for linear transformations or for matrices is less interesting than this one. Because, um, because it's more than a vector space isomorphism. For example, um, if you could compose things, uh, they, they correspond to matrices, uh, matrix multiplication. You can't do it in general, but for example, if these were linear operators, then you could. So, so that makes it more than a vector space isomorphism, it, it, sort of a ring isomorphism as well. Okay, so uh, don't worry about it if you don't know what that is. Uh, so so how, how do you have a, uh, an isomorphism of vector spaces? Well, you need an isomorphism. The map F that sends LVW to uh, the matrices. So you start, the, the domain is all linear transformations from V to W. The codomain is all M by N matrices with entries of F. How do I define a map F? Well, it takes a linear transformation. And what matrix does it give to me? The matrix of T, that linear transformation with respect to S and B. So, um, and this is something we've talked about. Given a linear transformation, you can have a matrix. So the fact that this is a function we have been talking about quite a bit, the only extra thing that I'm telling you now is that this map is, is a linear transformation and it's one-to-one -one and onto. So it's a vector space isomorphism. Um, so you, the, the thing really would want to prove is that it's a linear transformation. Um, and then and again, that's not too bad. It's sort of straightforward. You have to make sure that your notation is, um, is not, is not uh, getting in your way, but, but, it, uh, but, but it's not too hard to prove. Um, but to show that it's isomorphism, it's one to one and onto, you could actually show that it, the map has an inverse. And so you can come up with a map that goes from matrices to linear transformation. What is that? And that should not come as a surprise. So what does G22 a matrix A? Gives you LA. We have been talking about the fact that if you have a matrix, you can think of it as a linear transformation. Well, that's a map. That's a map that given a matrix gives us a linear transformation. 
And, and the point is that that map is, um, is an, the inverse of F. And, it's, it, and because it's the inverse of F, and if you prove that F is a, a linear transformation, its inverse will also be a linear transformation. It also means that both of them are one-to-one -one and onto, and they are isomorphisms. So as a byproduct of this, for example, we know that the dimension of uh, linear transformations from V to W is MN. So that means that um, if you have a, vector, a finite dimensional vector space and another finite dimensional vector space, and you want all the linear transformations that go from the domain to the codomain, then, um, um, then there is MN of them uh, that, that form a basis. And, and you can write all the other linear transformations as a linear combination of those two. And there's a lot more to be said. I just wanted to whet your appetite um, about uh, thinking about this even more abstractly uh, than we have been doing. But the point is that linear transformations and matrices in a very formal sense are the same thing. There's vector space isomorphisms. And if you isol go further and not look at the linear transformations from V to W, but from V to V, you look at linear operators, then those linear transformations can be composed with themselves um, and uh, with, with each other. And that, though, that actually corresponds to matrix multiplication. So there's actually more to this than, than a vector space isomorphism. Uh, there's more to it. And for that, you need to uh, take abstract algebra. So this is the end of this short lecture. And I will see you in the other lectures. And the, here's a picture of Santa Monica. <laughs>